record. All right, last module in unit two, we are discussing loop and a half. So last class, we talked about while loops, um, and we also discussed the fact that we, uh, we can't really stop a loop in the middle as long if the condition becomes false halfway through the loop, everything else in the rest of the body needs to finish running before the, uh, before the condition is checked again. So if we, if we look at this program, um, I don't have any, anything after my, uh, my num is changing, but I do have a bit of redundancy here. I have my num equals int input and a positive number at the top, while my num is less than or equal to zero, I'm going to tell the user, hey, that number has to be positive. And then I'm re-asking for my num from the user. And here I have redundancy. I have the exact same line of code two times, which, you know, it's fine, but anytime we can cut down on redundancy is going to be better. So how can we do this? Can we just get rid of that line? Will this code work? I see people shaking their head. Why won't this code work? You didn't define my num. Because my num doesn't have a value for this comparison. Absolutely correct. We'll get my, my num is not defined. So this is going to give us an error. Okay, so let's, let's give my num a value. So my num equals zero. So my num less than or equal to zero. That's going to be true. We're going to enter our loop now. But now, if we look through our, if we run through, we see that number must be positive error message before the user even has a chance to enter anything, right? That's not great. So that's kind of a weird feeling for the user to experience, saying, hey, you, you gave a bad input before they even had a chance to give an input. So that's not a good, good answer either. What if I what if I swap those two? Is this going to give me what I want? If I say, give me an input and then print number must be positive afterward. I see people shaking their heads again. Why won't this work? Because if you type the negative one, it's going to type print that first before ending it. So if I type a positive number, it's going to say number was positive, right? So if I enter negative one, it'll print number must be positive. I expect that. It's going to loop it back. But then if I enter five, five is a positive number, but I'm still going to see number must be positive before the loop ends. So this one also not a great solution because I'm seeing that must number must be positive when I don't really want or need to see it. So wouldn't it be convenient if we could stop the while loop in the middle? It sure would. And good news, we are allowed to do that using a new command. We're going to use the break command. And break lets us instantly end a loop and it will skip the remaining body, whether it's a while loop or a for loop. This will work for both types of loop. So if we look at our code, I've added an if statement in the middle saying if my num is greater than zero after my input, if my num is greater than zero, then break. And we're just going to jump completely out of our loop and we're gonna be done with the loop forever. We're not, we're not going to, we're going to, not print, we're not going to pass go, we're not going to collect $200, we're skipping the rest of the loop, just jumping to the end. So break, like I said, just going to jump right all the way to the end here. Now, because my variable, my num, isn't able to change in between my if statement and the condition for my while loop, there's really only one place that the loop is actually going to end, right? The old loop is only ever going to end in this if. It's never going to get past the if 
and then end at this while loop condition because if it was not greater than zero, it's not going to be not less than or equal to zero. It's always going to be less than or equal to zero if it wasn't greater than zero. So if this condition wasn't true, this condition is always going to not be true. Wow, it's not a well structured sentence. It's impossible to get to here with this condition being false and exit the loop. So with that in mind, we can actually just kind of eradicate the need for this condition entirely. We can replace that with while true because this condition, it doesn't matter anymore. Here we want to loop forever until the user enters a positive number at which point we will exit in this if statement. So the reason that this doesn't go infinite, this isn't an infinite loop, is because we still have a place within our program or within our loop where the loop can be exited. There is still a way for us to stop looping here. So my num is changing each time through the loop and we have a condition in which we're going to break, which is going to stop the loop. So we have a way to end our loop. It will finish. And we can also get rid of that initial value for my num because we don't need it for that condition anymore. That condition doesn't exist. So we don't need my num to exist before our loop starts. So our finished while loop here is going to say while true, we're going to get our user input. If their number was greater than zero, if it was not negative or zero, or if it was a positive number, we're going to break and then we can print nice number. So because the loop is ending in the middle of the body now, the condition can be true and the loop won't be infinite. So uh, the a while loop will continue to loop as long as its condition evaluates the Boolean value true. So this will loop forever except for our break in the middle. And using a while true loop with a break inside of an if statement is called the loop and a half approach because it loops, loops, loops until it gets halfway through the loop, at which point it stops. So loop and a half. Does that make sense how we can stop a loop halfway through? So the others, there's another keyword that we have access to, and that keyword is called continue. So while break skips the rest of the body of the loop and jumps to after the loop, continue is going to jump to the top of the loop instead. This allows you to skip the bottom part of your body, but you get to keep looping afterward if you want. So when you use this with a while loop, it's going to jump back up to the condition check for the loop. So if the condition is false, after you continue, you'll still exit the loop. But the um, but if the condition is still true, you will keep looping. So here's a little bit of a, a dif the difference between the two. So we have our code that's going to come before our loop. We have while the condition. So while this condition is true. We're going to do some stuff in our loop. If some other condition is true, then we're going to break. When we break, we completely exit and skip all this other stuff in our loop. We're going to skip the rest of the loop and exit it completely. With a continue, we have our same before and while condition stuff, our same do stuff condition or do stuff, whatever we're doing in our loop. And then if that other condition is true now, we're going to jump up here and check our condition again. So if our condition is still true, we're going to keep looping. Otherwise, we're going to exit the loop like we normally would when the condition is false. If this if statement is false, if this condition is false, 
we're not going to break, we're not going to continue, we're just going to continue doing the other stuff in our loop, um, like we normally would. If I use break or continue within a for loop, both will work exactly the same here. So break is going to do the same. We're, we're going to have a condition in the middle of our loop. If that condition is met, we're going to exit the loop and just skip anything else inside the loop. Uh, I is not going to have all of its values. We're just going to immediately exit the loop as it is. Uh, in a for loop, if we continue, we are going to jump back up to the top of the loop again, and our iterator, our variable i, is going to take the next value in the sequence. So we have our for i in range 3, i is going to equal 0, 1, and 2. Uh, if we continue, the value of i is going to shift to our next value in the sequence. If it was the last value in the sequence, our loop is just going to end as it were, like as it, as it normally would. Does how we can use break and continue to kind of edit our loops and how they run, that all make sense? Cool, all right. I will stop sharing.